thinking more from an instructor point of view. So if the goal is to have students create these infographics following some of those um, rules of thumb or design characteristics, um, how do we start to think about the assignment itself? And of course, um, starting with the, the learning outcomes, what's the intention of this, this uh, assignment is um, an advocated start. So through an infographics designer, what can you expect that students be able to do? Um, and, and through looking at some of the literature, some of the articles that uh, discuss case studies, present some of the uh, arguments for why, uh, why use an infographics assignment, uh, what we were able to glean from there is that um, students, of course, <coughs> are engaging with media all the time, um, especially now in, in this digital age as, as millennials or digital natives. Um, and yet it takes some digital little literacy skills, it takes communication skills to be able to pull together something that consolidates information at such a sort of broad or um, high level. Um, that there's a fair amount of curation to be done of selecting, using, and combining that information um, from a range of sources, and then deciding how it is that that's going to be communicated effectively through visuals and, and in writing. Um, of course, that, that process takes some critical analysis of, of looking at media or looking at images and deciding what it is that it, how those, those um, elements communicate a certain message. Or even on the flip side, when you're presented with digital content like an infographic, um, how you can be a critical reader of that infographic as well. So uh, one paper by Matrix and Hudson, um, it was a combined research study between Queens um, and Ryerson, two different classroom cases in which infographics were used as an assignment. Um, they, they concluded that the infographic assignment served as an experiential learning tool that allowed students to apply key competencies necessary for the digital skills class, uh, namely content curation and content production. Now, this had um, strong relationship to the course itself because both of those courses were in digital media theory or digital literacy. Um, and so they were sort of practicing what they were preaching in terms of content through the digital format. Uh, but it does speak to how an infographic requires students to, to curate, bring together, and then decide how it is that they're going to communicate that. Through this literature, we were also able to identify some of the um, recommended elements of assignment design, uh, which are listed here. So first off, making a rationale for students to arguing how it is that this infographic aligns to intended uh, learning outcomes of the course, to argue or to communicate what that value is for them in, in doing this assignment. Um, it's highly recommended in, in the, any case study we found um, there was some scaffolding in place so that students weren't just, you know, asked to produce an infographic. Rather, they were asked to walk through that process of research, of selecting a topic, researching, um, drafting in some sense what their infographic would contain, and then the actual production itself. Of course, a lot of the elements of what the evaluation structure uh, was going to be like was communicated through a rubric, and I have some examples to share today. Some. Um, and here we'll pull up some of the common elements of rubric design. Um, and then these the reflection and peer review are two components which come sort of recommended as a potential structure for your assignment. So oftentimes um, in, in, in the two case studies that were here, um, there's a reflection component related. So students aren't just submitting their infographic assignments, they're also possibly submitting um, between, so 150 to 300 word reflection on, on what they've learned or how they've organized or how they've structured their infographic. And then um, occasionally there's the incorporation of um, peer feedback or peer review as a, as a form of um, assessment structure. So the Queen's course um, had some peer feedback built into the um, the grading or weight, but there was also the instructor um, or TA assessment as well. 
was we looked at uh, probably five different rubrics overall. Some drawn from scholarly publication, but others that were found through Google searches and um, what was posted and available online. And these were the common elements that we that we found. So visual appeal being focused on fonts, colors, layouts, the visual elements, and how that contributes to meaningful uh, arrangement. Um, the content is it accurate. Is it focused? Um, or are there tangents, components that don't really seem to contribute to the overall message? Um, is it effective in informing and convincing the reader of its intended purpose or, or thesis statement? Um, the way it's organized, and then finally some um, element of citation. There are some elements here that uh, didn't make it to the list that, of course, are um, incorporated in rubrics. Mechanics being the one that stands out to me. Um, mechanics being more of uh, free of grammatical errors, words are legible and pertinent to topic. 